Hey guys, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online. In tonight's video, Food Packaging 101. I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to find the right food packaging and containers to sell your food products. Um, and I wanted to clarify some uh, misunderstandings that uh, may be out there in regards to what kind of plastics, what kind of containers can actually be used for uh, direct food contact. Because believe it or not, there's actually a variety of of plastics and some of them are not FDA or USDA compliant for direct food contact, which means that those plastics can leave a nasty chemical taste on the food. So you want to be very careful about how you package your food products. And also, this is also going to be a video to give you some super, super basic ideas about um, not reinventing the wheel as far as trying to find the right packaging for your food product. Um, you don't have to come up with some creative new concept for packaging. There's a lot of great existing packaging as well as uh, the size of your packaging, which is really crucial when you're trying to compete with other brands with your product. And I'm going to go over a little bit of information about that. So, all right, so let's get right to it. So the question that I got was from a subscriber and the question was this. Um, he, they watched a video about uh, the cake, how to ship a cake, and they noticed that the shrink wrap that I was using was making a direct surface contact with the cake okay and that's one way that's how we actually use it to uh to seal it heat seal it to the board at the baker's board and then ship the product so that it doesn't arrive damaged because it's been shrink wrapped it's very secure there's no shifting there's no moving around so is there such a thing as a plastic that is good to be used and one that is not to be used? yes there is i'm going to show you some examples of what i mean and now when you pick and choose your specific packaging for your product, there's a couple things you need to make sure that you're looking at online or wherever you may buy it. I think probably 99% of you are buying your packaging online. Make sure that it says this, and I'm going to highlight it for you. FDA and USDA compliant. If you don't see that on a plastic container product that's being listed online for you to buy, and then you place the food in that container, whatever that container may be, don't buy it or double check make sure that it is food compliant okay these products right here i'm going to show you and i'm going to give you a variety of samples tonight so and like as always my videos are short and sweet and to the point so i'm going to get right to it these are all perfect for direct food contact okay so damien i'm, I'm new to the food business damien i'm not sure what that means what what does direct food contact okay so these are foods these are products that can be put in the package without having to be pre-packaged and then put into these packages. Okay, does that make sense? They can actually be put directly into this, sealed up on the top, and they can touch the plastic surface that they're in. Now, there's a lot of food products that are actually put into packaging that is for direct food, and then that package is kind of repackaged again, if you will, in another box or something to that effect, that that is the, the product box or product packaging on the outside but the inside has a liner. Let me let me put it to you this way. Every time you buy a cereal, obviously cereal is not put into the box. Cereal is put into a bag that is, that is food grade, direct contact plastic bag. The bag is sealed and then it's put into a box and the, the cereal box is sealed. And that allows for um, shelving of the product in, the, in a retail setting. You know what I mean? It's It makes it easier to put on a shelf. It makes it nicer to merchandise. It uses the space a lot more efficiently and effectively, okay? If they just started randomly – now, I know I know there are a couple of brands out there that are just bags. There's no box, and I know what they are. I won't mention their names, but I know there are some companies that do that. But for the rest of the cereals that are made, it just makes for a better presentation, and you put more graphics in kids. It, it attracts colors with all the colors and cartoon characters for cereals. The kids get, can see them and all that good stuff. That is a great example of a food product that is in two separate packaging, Okay. You have the bag and then you have the box. Okay, so if you're if you're creating a trail mix and you want to just do one of these, this is perfectly fine. Okay, so direct food contact. Always look for that. It has to be FDA compliant. Why? Well, here's the thing. PVC is another type of plastic similar to the poly... <laughs> I, get, I have a little bit of a problem every time I say this word. Polyolefine, I think it is. Polyolefine. Uh, shrink wrap. Okay. These do the same thing, but they are not the same thing. Okay. If you were to, and this is ultra important, like for us, when we use uh, the shrink wrap for our, um, 
the shrink wrap for our cookies and all of our baked goods go on a baker's board, and then I secure them with uh, food grade shrink wrap. And that means that the shrink wrap goes and it can actually be heated up. It seals to the surface of the food product and then it securely ships it. Okay. But when you open it, it doesn't leave a chemical plastic like taste on the surface of the food. It's very important. Trust me. The reason why I say that is that when I first started, I didn't know any of this. So this is of course why I started marketing food online is to show you guys all the stuff I've learned for the past 11 plus years or so now. Okay, so when I first started shipping the shipping the cookies, I didn't know, and I was actually using this. And a customer call, or I call a customer actually emailed me. Uh, this was on eBay, and said the cookies tasted kind of like plastic. What's going on? And it was just like I was thinking to myself, "What do you mean plastic? I don't bake plastic cookies. I have no idea what he was talking about." Then I realized there was a difference. There's a difference in PVC. So you have to understand if you're using this type, let's whatever the product is. I'm just using this as a general example. If you're using it and you're heating up a plastic and the surface of it is touching directly to the food, it's not food grade, it is PVC, you're going to have a chemical tasting product at the end of the day. Because you have to understand shrink wrap is a heated product. You have to heat up the plastic, allow it to shrink, and it becomes an almost liquefied type of situation. Not really liquefied, but it softens up. So then what, what you want to do is you want to just make sure that that is specifically a uh, shrink wrap that can be direct food contact. So let me show you some more examples because this may some, – sometimes it's a little bit misleading because a lot of people see plastic and they think that it can just have – any type of plastic can have direct food contact. These are all uh, – this is actually the WebstaurantStore.com. These are actually all food-grade products that can have direct food contact. And it can also be microwaved. Also, there's a lot of information. Let me click on this. Let me show you really quick. And this is, like I said, super important because as you begin to make your food products, do make sure that the packaging is food grade um, that will allow you to have that direct food contact. You don't want customers to come back to you telling you that it tastes like plastic. Now, aside from heating up shrink wrap, right, a lot of these plastic containers, if they are not, there are some that are not food grade. If they come in contact with food, like for instance, this is a great picture. This has a pasta salad of some kind that has vinegar, has acids and such. If that sits in a container that is not food grade long enough, that chemical taste will seek right into the food. Okay. And like I said, the only thing you really just need to be aware of is you need to make sure that it is food safe. This is actually really interesting here. This one, the web store store has offers a ton of of extra information about every product. And that's why I love this website so much. Let me just scroll down and show you. So this particular product, it can be microwaved, it's BPA free. Okay, that is actually a chemical that used to be in an enormous amount of plastic containers. And many consumers actually ended up eating or drinking it or eating it because it seeped into the food. So it is safe for food contact. There it again, there it is again, okay? Now keep this in mind, like I said before, Make sure that you find websites that offer this information. If they don't have it, contact them if you want to or just move on, find another one. Now, another really quick tip as well. Once you get your food uh, business on the verge of getting it up and running or if you're starting small, make sure that you find multiple suppliers for your food product, uh, for any aspect of your food. If it's an ingredient, if it's packaging, labeling, uh, uh, label making for you. If, you're, if there's a company that's actually printing your labels for you, if you're buying labels, okay, try to find suppliers, at least two to three suppliers for every aspect of your food. And what I mean is, is if you're, if you're buying your ingredients online, let's say at um, bakerydepot.com, whatever it may be, I'm just making this up. Um, and you're getting your flour, your sugar, all that stuff, right? Let's say you're baking some products. Make sure you have two to three different companies online that you can access those exact same ingredients because I have personally experienced where suppliers run out of containers or they run out of a supply and I'm stuck. Now that was a lesson that I learned when I first started, but I don't obviously do that anymore. I have tons of suppliers. I think we deal with actually around 50 to 55 or I think 50, 50 to 55 suppliers uh, for all kinds of stuff. Okay. Labels, uh, printing, everything, the packaging. So if this company, let's say is out of this particular product and you need it, then you have a backup. So in essence, do yourself a favor, take my advice, have a backup for all of your um, supplies, your ingredients, every aspect of your product, okay? Now, 
The one thing you also want to do, and I'm going to give you another tip, when you are dealing with co-packers and private label companies, now for the most part, to be honest with you, um, they're going to almost 99% of the time, if not 100%, to be honest with you, they're going to deal with uh, packaging. They're going to know the packaging difference between something that's food grade and not. Make sure, though, you just follow up because, again, at the end of the day, it's your name on your product, not your co-packer or your private label company. They're not going to put their name on it. Your name is on it, and it's up to you to find it out. So make sure that all of your packaging, if you're buying it and having it shipped to your co-packer or your private labeler, that all of them are compliant with the FDA and USDA, okay? And if there is a question in your mind and your gut's telling you you're not really sure about it, make sure that their equipment and everything that they're working with, of course, is for direct food contact. Now, really quick, I wanted to show you back to the shrink wrap. As I mentioned, this is PVC. Do not heat this up and let this touch your food product because it will taste like a plastic football, actually. Okay, so let me click on this. So the poly, this is always difficult for me to say, polyolefine <laughs> shrink wrap is FDA. See it? Smack dab right there. Okay. Direct food. What does that mean again? Let me just recap it one last time and then I'll wrap this video up. When you shrink wrap it, obviously this is a football. You, you, by the way, you can shrink wrap if you, know, if you buy this and you have a product that's not food and you need to shrink wrap it, like a football or something. It can do that as well. I mean, obviously nobody's going to eat a football. But this can be used for that. Now, is there a difference in pricing? Uh, not necessarily. There's really not a huge difference. One, one shrink wrap that is FDA compliant compared to one that is strictly a PVC base is not going to have a gigantic difference in, food, in uh, pricing. But the, for you, the most important is making sure that it can touch your food and it doesn't taste like a plastic spoon. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. Just trying to want to, I wanted to clarify this for that subscriber. Um, I had about a half a dozen, uh, just a few people were asking, and I, I wanted to do a video because it would make sense because I know that if you're watching this and maybe you had questions about it and you haven't contacted me, um, I can clarify that for you in this video. So as always, guys, I appreciate you guys taking time to watch my videos. If you have any questions about shrink wrap or any type of packaging and you're not really sure about it, again, just let me know down in the descriptions. I'll uh, get to those questions as quick as possible, and I'll see you guys either on the next podcast. Check our podcast out, uh, by the way, Marketing Food Online Podcast. You can stream it pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And that way you will know all of the new videos as they come up. And I'll see you guys on the next video.